Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. We are live in Studio B. It is alumni day for BYU football, the big alumni game tonight. And fittingly, we have to have one of the quarterbacks with us to discuss said alumni game. Version 3, it is Riley Nelson. Riley, welcome back to BYUSN. So glad to be with you. How would you sum up your emotions as you play in, yes, a fun event, but there's still competitiveness there. Like, you still want to win this thing. Well, there's, yeah, there's a lot of elements to it. So, f first of all, goal number one, make sure everybody leaves the field without a surgery. We failed in that goal as collectively <laughs> as alumni last year, you know, with Max's issue. But that goal number one is, like, no surgeries, okay? Then after that, it's, uh, I'm going to tell all the boys, uh, when I say boys, grown old men at this point, sure, right? <laughs> sure. All the old men, the same thing I tell my little sons and, and the young boys that play sports. Yeah, sports are about fun, but they are the most fun when you win. So you bet we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna be out there. I'm I'm uh, assigned to Team Royal. They're on a two-year losing streak, right? Two years ago on the Hail Mary. Last year it was, it was kind of close, but but Navy was ahead the whole game and kind of closed them out. So it's time to end, you know, Navy's reign of terror <laughs> and and enter in the new uh, wave of Royal. You are carrying the Royal banner tonight for sure. Okay, what's the best part about participating in something like this the the memories flooding back it is it's crazy and you know we, t we joke about injuries here's how most ex-athlete injuries happen you know like you're old you know you are <laughs> washed up but then the second you get back in an environment that's even somewhat even fractionally like what it used to be when you were playing your brain can't tell the difference. And so it's sending signals to your muscles and your bodies to do the same things that you were doing 15 years ago, and it doesn't respond in the same way, and so injuries inevitably happen. But no, that same thing happens. Like, you get out in that environment, and I, I, it's funny, my wife makes fun of me. Like, I talk different, you know? I go back to, like, talking how I used to talk when I was 20 years old and in the locker room with the boys, and here I am, you know, grown man with kids, and we're all grown men's kids. Some of them got grandkids. Yeah. And you just revert back, but you can't help it. It's, it, it's amazing. But that's the best part about it is, well, first of all, football is a sport where you don't get that many opportunities to compete once you're done playing in college. Basketball, you know, there's a lot of opportunities, or tennis, or some of these others. Sure. But football, it just kind of ends. So that's, the, that's really great about it. But the second thing is just going through that kind of fun stage where, you're, you're back where you were. It was almost like you never left, even though 15 years have gone by. You mentioned briefly your close friend, Max Hall, who's going to be a quarterback on an opposing team again tonight. Um, given that you were teammates and uh, you work so closely with each other, what's that competitive element like? Like, what have the conversations been like between you and Max? So, um, Max was really good at establishing the hierarchy. <laughs> I backed Max up. I was fresh off my mission, right? Even though I had played at Utah State for a year before my mission, I came in here and, like, Max ran that quarterback room. And, yeah, we've become friends and over the years, and we've spent, and our families have spent time together and all those things. But, uh, but st I still look up to Max as, like, that mentor. He was that senior. I was that sophomore, right? He was the guy three-year starter, winningest all-time quarterback, and, and uh, you know, I was just trying to glean anything I could from him. So a little bit of it is still there. But this does happen to be one of the first times that we're on opposite sides of the ball. Yeah. So you better believe I'm going to take all that stuff that I learned from him and a few lessons I learned on my own and put it all together to try and, you know, snatch victory away from his claws. What lessons can you learn from him and his unfortunate injury that he suffered last year so that you avoid something this year? So listen, I, this is not just a stance that I have for old men and alumni games because you see this with young players. It happened on the, like, jump, you know, shoulder bump. Yes. If I were a coach of a team, you know, of like a high school team or whatever, I would have a no jumping celebration rule. You see ankles happen. You see ACLs happen. Like, you see that all the time. Like, look, we got to go back to... You know, I, I don't know, the old, like, maybe we do the, uh, in fact, I, I'm going to set that up at practice. We're going to do the Top Gun high five. Okay, okay. Yeah, just the bang, Between bang. Goose. I love yeah. that. No jumping, no shoulders. Let's keep everybody healthy. But that's rule number one, stay, keep my both feet firmly planted <laughs> on the ground. You get up in the air, anything can happen. This is such a veteran move by you, right? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I study the tape. Don't think that I'm coming in here, you know, without having done my research. I've watched the tape. I've, I've made plans. i got a game plan. We're, we're not messing around. Yeah, Max was talking big about his playbook last year, and he had his binder. 
Riley, you're a gamer too, and you're you're very much in the details. So uh, I I don't know how much you want to reveal, but what kind of preparation have you put in? Uh, it's off camera. I don't have it here with me, but yeah, you know. So Max. I appreciate him for his old school, but we'll see how it does against the new school. I got a playbook on an iPad, so we're going to be that much. We're not going to be flipping through pages and holding <laughs> it up. We got iPads, so I've got the, I got two things in the advantage over. So I've got all, you know, some concepts that I really like. We're going to go over a practice, but then also what the iPad and technology gives us the ability to do. If we notice a chink in the defense, uh, in the armor, yeah. the defense that we need to take advantage of, yeah. we'll be able to draw it up right there on the spot. You know, he's probably over there working with dry erase markers and whiteboards. We've got iPads. I've got, we'll see if my guys actually wear them. I've got call sheets. So, yeah, I mean, lack of preparation. If Team Royal is somehow not victorious tonight, uh, it won't be for lack of preparation. Oh, certainly, and certainly on your part. Riley Nelson is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Speaking of Team Royal, what do you like about the roster makeup that's trying to execute this technologically advanced playbook that you have given them? Fresh legs at DB, first and foremost. And I got, we got weapons out there. We got Kavika Fanua, again, fresh legs. So coming back to the offensive side, we got good legs at running back. Uh, Aleva and Neal. Le Aleva has been, listen, despite not winning or being on the winning team, Aleva Hifo, well, Aleva and Mitch. I do have to mention Mitch because Mitch has got a lot of touchdowns. Again, I've gone back and watched the tape. But Aleva's been the best player in this game the last mm. two years, just having me. So He looks like Aleva. he could still play, Riley. Oh, yeah, totally. And Neil, you know, Neil's still kind of training, kind of out there on the fringe and, and, and all that. But then here's the secret weapon, okay? The chemistry that Mitchell Juergens and I built up <laughs> over our years together on the radio broadcast <laughs> will manifest itself in a connection on the field tonight in the alumni game. I love it. Can't wait to watch you compete against Team Navy. Uh, we do need to ask you, just because you were an analyst on yeah. the BYU radio set for so long, and... You yourself were involved in a unique quarterback situation with Jake Heaps, so it's going to be great to have him back tonight as well. You worked through some unique scenarios at BYU. The Cougar quarterback room is in a unique place right now with yeah. the addition of Gary Bohannon and Jake Retzloff as the incumbent. So how do you see the quarterback room, and, and what are the challenges and maybe benefits of having that quarterback battle happening right now? I, and I was in a similar situation. Now, granted, it, it was a guy new to the program. He wasn't a fifth-year senior like Gary is, but Jake, who, by the way, I believe participated yes, today, right? Yes. So good to have Jake back, and it's, it's uh, funny. I'm sure we're having fun with it. Hopefully all the fans are having fun with that, reliving those memories. But Jake was new to the program. I had been here, you know, established for a year. So as far as that, but that's a very big dynamic, as far as that dynamic, as far as like leadership and who the other 120 guys are comfortable with and familiar with. And, uh, and it's difficult, um, you know, uh, and spring ball is an interesting time too, because you're, you're splitting reps. And I mean, it's, I know it's a two horse race, but you got other dudes in there. I, sure. A lot of people in the community asking about, you know, local kid Ryder Burton. Is he going to get a shot to compete? Tracy Bourget. Yeah, exactly. Sure. So it goes beyond those two, even though those are the two cream of the crop. But from from the player's perspective, so I'll, I'll take my analyst hat off for a second and just talk about the player perspective. And it is, I loved it because every rep, there's something riding on every rep. Mm. And, man, and you have to manage that stress. You can't hide from that stress. You hide from that stress, you're going to fall behind in the con. So you have to embrace that, right? When you're the guy, like when you're the starter, you don't have that. You can, you know, there, you can kind of work through some things or you can, you know, hey, can we run that back? And you're in a quarterback competition. If you don't see a read clearly or you don't execute or you have a lapse in judgment, there's no like going to going to Coach Roderick and be like, hey, can we run that playback again in the next period? Uh, I, I, you know, my mind wasn't right. They do that, you know, you get a minus on the play and and uh, and the competition rolls on. So, it it is truly a refiner's fire for quarterbacks uh, to do that now. It can be at the expense of the other team. They don't know who their leader is. They're not quite sure who to listen to. You know, hopefully, my hope, and, and we get to go to practice today, and I get to observe some of that. Hopefully, there's some veteran leadership at other positions, because that's what you need. You need veteran lead. You know, we had Harvey Unga, who was on the team, you know, doing, doing that at that time. But you have a, 
a, a veteran leader step in and kind of calls up the huddles. Normally, everybody looks to the quarterback. But in a quarterback competition, mm. if you have two, you have none. You're not quite sure who to look to. And so there's some of those dynamics that do tend to weigh on the rest of the team a little bit. But I think it's well worth it because of the refiner's fire that those quarterbacks will put in. The end product will be that much, that much more ready to compete in the fall. Riley, awesome stuff. We appreciate your insight into what a unique deal that is for the current BYU quarterbacks and certainly look forward to watching you compete against Max. Your team roller, you're rocking your Navy jacket right now, which is a little yeah. throwback. Yeah, I mean, well, so what maybe do you we got to get you a royal one. Well, yeah, I'd love the newest one, but you know, I was I was talking with you like, this is my, this, and this is my actual Letterman jacket. This is what they were giving out. You know, I was here 09 to 12, so around that 2010 time. And I, like, I almost want to coin this to like, the transit we were the era of transition right going from the mountain west to independence yes you still see you can see here on the camera it still has some of the tan a hint of tan for, yeah from the early days <laughs> i don't know where the black sleeves come from but it's pretty there sharp was a blackout you played against oregon state in the blackout right and royal has like overwhelmingly taken over but in my four years royal only made one appearance it was the 2009 utah game yeah and then it kind of went back in the closet until now i mean it's you know we're full blown we are wearing a different jersey every week, right? Which is awesome to see. But uh, yeah, it was fun to pull this out of the closet and dust it off. If I don't wear it for stuff like this, when do you wear Why? it? Exactly. You know? Why are so, you saving it? Yeah. Uh, an appropriate choice. And I'm glad it just still fits. You know, I don't know how many <laughs> more years before the waistline starts growing and it doesn't fit anymore. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get my uses out of it while I can. I love you. Look great. Thank you. Okay, can't wait yeah. to watch you compete tonight. Thanks, Riley. You bet. Thanks for having me. All right.